Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 442. Uh, each week um, we meet here to uh, review the questions and answers given on the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. And Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's uh, also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. Um, and um, Masataki is based in Wimbledon. Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of Masataki. All right, let's um, have a look at uh, our question list. Um, where are we? We might have to. Yeah, that's right. Let's do this. Okay. All right, so the first question, the question one on our run list is how do you process a big keyword research? That's the title. Robert Seaman asks, uh, how do you process a big keyword research, meaning keyword classification for pillar pages? I don't know what that means, pillar. Um, or mapping the segment. Uh, let's say uh, 3K to 20K keywords. Is Excel the best tool for this? Uh, Open Refine can help, as I found out. Do you know any alternative, faster solution? Thank you for help. Um, yeah, oh man, I can't remember. Yeah, it's, um, I saw an article, I can't for the life of me remember who published it. Uh, where they were doing keyword research, but on a massive scale, and they were using, yeah, they were using, I don't know if they were using Google Sheets or normal Excel, um, but they had some really nice little processes uh, on things. Um, uh, hang on, let me just see if I can find it. Yeah, you know, there are a few things. I don't know if it's the exact one I was doing. Um, but Moz, is, uh, Moz has one, I think they're calling it um, Build an Advanced q and Analysis Report in Excel. So just search uh, Build an Advanced q and Analysis Report in Excel. Um, yeah, and good luck with that. It's It's a very long process, but yeah, enjoy. Okay. Um, we might bring in this one up again later. All right, let's um, move on to our next um, Question number two on our run list from Abhishek Shetty. That's question two. Do plugins slow down the speed of a website? You can bet your sweet bippy they do. Um, Abhishek said, uh, hey guys, uh, do plugins slow down the speed of a website? We started using Gravity Forms um, for our website. Uh, apparently to style a Gravity Form in an Elementor Builder, um, we need to get an add-on, our web admin is against it because he feels it is going to slow down the website. What do you think? P.S. I, I know we can use CSS styling, but I don't know how to. Huh. Well, you just, you know, look, not all plugins do. Um, 
it depends what the plugin is actually doing. That is the, the big thing. Um, I mean, ideally, if you're doing something and you already said you've got a developer, I mean, ideally he should be able to, to do that, you know, without relying on a plugin. But um, the only way you can do it is test it, really. Um, you know, and Elementor's already bad enough in terms of speed. Um, yeah. Look, some do, some don't. Depends what it's actually uh, doing uh, in, uh, you know, in, on site, on page, when that page loads itself. Uh, but I suppose develop, uh, plugin developers have got a bit better, more refined these days, taking things into account. But you, the, the only way to know is, is if that specific plugin is going to um, slow something down is by installing it. Uh, ideally, you know, try and find a developer that can 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 build it uh, in template for you. Um, but then again, you're already dealing with Elementor, which is bad enough. So I guess it's try it and see, really. And then you're going to have to try and find how to speed that particular one up. As um, Michael Martin is um, aptly put, um, um, and followed up by uh, Brendan Malone, uh, he said, ask the admin to test the site performance with and without the plugin. And Brendan Malone said, Elementor um, already slows down your website. Um, Stephen Kaufman had a comment. Um, yeah, okay. And Christine Hansen said a solution could be to use an external form builder. All right, number three on our run list, it's from Brendan Malone. Um, Brendan Malone said, what can be done, or it's titled, what can be done about search results spam in WordPress? Uh, if that is even what it is called uh, in brackets. Search Console is showing more than 12,000 of these. Um, just block it in robots checks uh, using um, disallow and I won't try and read that uh, um, modifier. Um, and uh, she finished up with can more be done? Lisa Brown said, um, it looks like WordPress 5.7 includes a fix for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I mean, yeah. So uh, try updating your actual WordPress version. Like Lisa said, she included, they included a fix. So that's cool. Um, and in the meantime, because you're going to have a lot of stuff already potentially out there, you know, just use the robots TXT also. Um, that that you know that that's not going to harm future anyway. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, it's always it's always uh, <laughs> keep your work keep the WordPress install up to date. Yeah. Well, especially keep your plugins up to date on on your WordPress installation. Um, they, they tend to expire first. Um, okay, let's go to number four. Travis King uh, asked the question title, does pinging help um, SEO? Um, and or not much. Michael Martin has said um, it depends on what you're pinging and whether you're doing it out of desperation or actually having some new content um, to let the ping service know about? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say no, Travis. Uh, I'm guessing the reason you're asking this is because you're having stuff, you're publishing stuff as just like not getting indexed. Um, well, one, Google knows about this. Two, I don't think they're too bothered, you know. I mean, they've got so much crap that's going on in the minute. Um, and three, funny enough, uh, John Mueller actually addressed this 
not specifically about pinging, but about how to get your stuff indexed faster. And he was literally like, get a link pointing to it. So um, I wouldn't necessarily link to the actual article that, for example, hasn't been indexed or articles. I would probably just do a link, uh, you know, try and get a, you know, a, a link out there to your top line blog navigation where I'm assuming that you've got displayed. Um, so, yeah, uh, to try, try and try and get a couple of links pointing to your actual blog page, your top line blog page. Um, so that Google's following an external link into that and then follows it more often. Thank you, Tim. Okay, number five uh, on our run list. Um, it's titled, I thought of having another category. It's from Ong Ming Kuhn, uh, who goes on to say, uh, hi there, I have an e-commerce website selling sportswear and I'm shifting from WordPress to Shopify. Previously, I only have pages for categories like tops, pants, leggings, etc. Uh, however, after researching, I found that there were many keywords that were activity related. So I thought of having another category based on activities, for example, gym, yoga, run, training, uh, so I can rank for more keywords. I'll be writing different content for each page and filtering out products um, that are only related to those activities. But as, as my current range is slightly small, so I'm not sure if I'm creating too many pages. And um, uh, will it be uh, considered doorway pages and get penalised for it? That's an interesting thought. Thanks so much in advance uh, from Ong Men Kuhn. So, okay, so you've got two things here. Um, you're concerned that you, because you don't essentially have, um, yeah, I see what you mean. So let's say you've only got two types of, um, oh, I don't know why they call them yoga pants, but um, so let's say you've only got two types of yoga pants, right? And then you have them listed in yoga and then you have them listed in gym. And so you've got gym, da -da, yoga, da -da. now you're not essentially going to change that product to call them gym pants. They're going to be yoga pants. So it would make more sense to have them in the yoga section, obviously. But you don't want to be creating a gym pants section and then having them called because you probably are going to call them, uh, you know, super stretch yoga pants or whatever. That's where I would kind of be really careful until you have more product. Um, yeah, you know, I would be really careful because essentially that gym page with two yoga pant products in it is not really going to do specifically well it's not going to harm you you're not going to have because it's a category page it's a category landing page and i'm assuming you're going to give a little introduction hi welcome to xyz you know we specialize in blah 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 blah, blah. um it, you're not necessarily going to get penalized for it but it's not going to do particularly well so look it's not going to harm you but i would really wait until you've got or you you know have additional product that justifies you creating that new one and you don't have to have them all at once when you when you you know when you when you create it or the site's live you know like any business it develops but i would certainly you know you know, uh, steer clear of, let's say, um, uh, I don't know, you had a, a totally empty category just because you thought I'd have a category. Well, that's not good for the user. And then that's certainly not good, um, you know, in, in the whole uh, scheme of things. So try and be selective. And as the business grows, 
then you can start including that, you know, the, the, the newer products and newer categories. Yeah, I agree. Um, sort of the, the second set, sort of gym, yoga, run, training, and so, so forth, that's sort of thematic activities based. Um, so you don't necessarily want to have product pages for that, but you may want to create articles for those themes. So let's say this is the 2022 hot look for training. You know, this is how you coordinate. This is the top you want to wear with this, you know, um, um, pants or leggings or whatever. So you could then uh, put together a resource that people will consume as a reading material more than rather than just selling the product directly. So you will have the best of both worlds, as it were. So if someone's looking specifically for a product, you want that person to land on the product page because they have made up their mind, they want that product. The thing you want to do is to make it as easy and painless for that person to complete that purchase. But then you might have people who are looking for information or tips or you know what to do, what to wear, what, how to coordinate. And if you can receive those people and then funnel them towards um, products, then that's a good thing because you're broadening your potential customer base. So yeah, I wouldn't sort of replicate things, but I would treat them as different things and perhaps think about creating a category that is more content-based articles. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Thank you so much. All right, let's um, roll along to number number six on our run list. Do you have a problem with the indexing new pages? Uh, Ahmed Sabri asked this uh, question, and um, he went on to say, um, "Hello, everyone. Is there a problem with indexing new website pages and articles for this year?" Due to Google updates, I see Tim Cap has uh, already had. had yeah, it's not, it's it's not updates. It was actually brought up with. I mean, they've known about it because there's been so many people talking about it. Uh, but it was brought up in the there was a conf, search conference I think in Denmark. Where was it? God, there's been so many going on this week. Anyway. Um, Danny Sullivan said they would make sure to look into this. And also this week, it was brought up again with John Mueller, and he said submitting, you know, yeah, you can submit to your, um, submit the URL. However, that's no, obviously no guarantee in Search Console. <laughs> but he did say uh, having an external link to that, um, uh, would certainly help it uh, be found and indexed. Um, so yeah, but don't go and buy links for God's sakes. You know, just figure out another way. Okay. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's. Um, uh, actually, no. Look, there's a couple of gems here. Um, to, firstly, Tim's comments, and then also Michael Martinez uh, said, if all else fails, change what you're submitting to the search engine, because at the end of the day, uh, it only cares about what its own uh, algorithms conclude, and that, that includes assessing site quality. Um, we each have our own opinions about what is good site quality, but our opinions don't matter. So you thought Google cared about you. Yeah. On 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 the flip side, um, yeah, you know, I, the, this is the whole thing when I said, you know, they said it's about quality, but you know, I definitely wasn't buying into that uh, because I've been with a new client, I suppose, going on to five months now, six months, and we've published a shitload, and you know, we don't. It's all good stuff. Um, and it is horrendously slow on in indexing. I mean, we're not even a quarter of the way through of the content being found. Um, but within the last week, 
that uptick has 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 been dramatically dropping by sort of five a day so you know what i mean like i think this i think you know if we look at this in terms of new sites or things like this it's just one of those things now that they are going to you must remember that literally google only has I mean, they, sh you know, they, they, they have to have data centers for all of this. Data centers need electricity. They need massive amounts of power for aircon and God knows what else. And just like you cannot believe. And as the web grows and people are just boom, pages daily, boom, 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 they are just going to be throttling this back a bit, you know um there is just it cannot continue on such a, a massive rate uh without without uh, uh you know there has to have to find it like sort of some kind of stable medium to the whole thing um and that's what i think is what's really happening behind the scenes but that's my own personal like sort of thought that's what we want to hear tim your own personal all right then let's go to number uh, seven on our run list um this one from travis king um what can be done to still rank high um travis went on to say uh, so whenever you look for my keywords for my service businesses website on google i rank high however if google takes over and auto inputs uh, pressure washing service uh, near me, it completely changes not only my ranking, but everyone else's uh, as well. What can be done to still rank high after Google knows your location? Well, this is the thing you see. <laughs> Someone using the query pressure washing service near me is literally using that user's location. If you aren't near the user, well, then do you, do you know what I mean? And it's the same on the flip side, Travis. Like, if they, if Google, if if the user says a pressure washing service near me, and Google finds one, and if you look at some of those results, they typically go from you know close, so like one mile, two mile, and three mile in the local pack, and you're eight miles away. Like, even if you were in that local pack, right? Like, would the actual user pick you? Like, I literally, if I'm searching for something near me, it's near me. Like, if I'm not concerned, if it's a, a, a distance, then fine. But, you know, just think of it from like, how many would you actually convert even if you were appearing? So, yes, it's nice to be ranking there, but look at it from, you know, from the from the user you know users nowadays have a lot of people have grown up with it with it with the net um they are a lot more nuanced into these things whereas as old daddy's still kind of thinking i want to rank for this right um so just think of the conversion of that like if they were saying pressure washer near me 8 10 15 20 miles away but they ignore the one that's one mile, two mile, and three miles away. And they all equally as good. They all, let's say, you know, got 10 reviews and all pretty good. It's like, those are the ones we want to show to this user because he is specifically wants something near him. On the flip side is like, just, I would have a look at some, you know, if you've got your, you already say you rank high, high but it's for the near me. Um, how can we possibly refine that? And I'm not saying, and, and, I'm, and I'm, um, I'm not saying because literally Google wants to show the person near the user. Um, but you could refine it by just looking at some of your stuff on, on site, not, not, you know, not chucking them, um, you know, like, but if in your location pages, uh, if you're just giving more like qualifiers saying something like, um, uh, or if in, in, in your, um, in your article, like in, in your updates, like, uh, uh, maybe you've got a job, uh, like our work page, 
and in that you list um, uh, brick brick uh, brick driveway clean in and I don't know if you want to use the the, 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 the the town location or maybe the postcode, whichever, but I'll probably try and stick to the actual, more like the actual town in words. And then you would say, look, you know, and you give like a profile kind of thing. Um, so it's like, um, this was clean, this was the quote, it took us this long, uh, before picture, after picture. Um, and then at the bottom of that, as these build up, you can actually say, uh, nearby jobs, you know, nearby. So we're, we're starting to into, you know, trying to start getting the machine to understand where these jobs you have done that you actually would work in or the areas. And then you're saying, and this location is nearby this location. So just start thinking of it in terms of, um, you've still got to feed the machine, but uh, and and for service area businesses, our work or work pages where people can actually view your work, where the job was, what the location was, what the quote was, how long it took you to do it, create yourself a little template. So every, every job you finish, you take a before picture, after picture, you've got the standard kind of template for it. Where was the area? What was the location? Um, how many days did it take you to do it? What was the quote on that? Why did you quote that? You know, was there any uh, problems? Did you have to do any pre-work to it? I don't know. Like, I don't know about pressure washing. So, like, maybe you have to use a soft wash on something that's brick because it's not actually cemented in. I don't know. Um, stuff like that. You know, just good, good stuff. This all works into your site. Uh, it will all works into the understanding. You can also post as as you've updated those. Those can go on your social media. Those pages. But you can also start giving, it can give you a, a, the machine a broader understanding of where you actually work and service. Now, I'm just going to go back and say one more time, this won't necessarily influence the near me because that is based on the actual user location, not your location. So, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's roll on to number eight on our run list uh, halfway through. Um, it's the title is I do not know how to strategically place keywords. Uh, it's from Ryan Cooper. Ryan said I own a cleaning business. I would like to improve my local ranking, but I do not know how to strategically place keywords in my site. Um, should I? pages for each town I want to service. That seems ridiculous. Um, and are there any best practices on this? Okay, so let's just, so you're a service area business and I don't know what you clean. Let's say you clean offices, houses, end of tenancy, um, Mm. There's probably other kind of distinct uh, areas or whatever that a lot of cleaning companies use. Um, so the first thing is, is your your main site. Now you do obviously have an area in mind. Uh, I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're in the States or, or where you are. But um, so uh, like in the UK, it would be Ryan's cleaning and it would be professional cleaning service in, and we have counties which aren't massive and, you know, people could literally travel to them. Now in the States, it's a state which is probably too big. You'd probably need to refine that. So it depends where you are, but you know, your main site, remember, is going to be your top line area, your main thing. So in the UK, it's, Northamptonshire or like let's say if it was in West in London because London's big but um so you would say you would define it in a particular area so West London South London whatever or uh, um, you're not going to say cleaning service in Texas because that's mega you would probably break that down to Austin and 
if you had a neighboring section, right? Um, so that would be your top line. Remember that. So it'd be our cleaning service in that your homepage. That's your top line in your thing. That's your H1. Um, and then you would have break it down in specific areas, right? So let's say now, you know, specifically in your mind, you've got five top main towns or breakdowns in those areas. I'd probably go with the top five, let's say and maybe create a top five and remembering that there are interspersed areas in those. Now that's specifically just for your search results because those will, will actually rank uh, in a search result when someone's going X, Y, Z, uh, Austin, you know, a particular suburb, right? And like, rather than go, you know, I, I wouldn't fine tune it and literally pick everything out you know for the minute you know go on five but remember you need they need to be a little bit more unique um to one another they can't literally be boilerplate and that's why i say don't don't go don't go crazy pick sort of you know in a nice circumference within that which you because you know where you want to work you don't want to do a location page for something that's 150 miles away from you Let's just be real. You know, it's 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 about it's about cost and breakdown and everything, right? Then, what I always recommend for a service area business, and I've just covered this like two seconds ago, is create a, an hour work section within, right? So, you know where your main jobs have been already. You've already got your location pages. Now, within your location pages, at the bottom of them you can have your hour work in that area, right? Expanding those areas. So you would have a snippet people can click through. It would be end of tenancy, end of tenancy cleaning um, in XYZ town. And that falls with, um, it, within that location page. The location page may be the slightly larger town and this might be a suburb of it, but it fits within that. So not only are you creating unique location pages, but you are feeding the machine in terms of where you're actually working, these little smaller areas within the bigger areas. So end of tenancy, um, what was the job? How long did it take? Uh, images, you know, uh, images of the job. Um, and obviously contact us, right? Next job is uh, an office cleaning, whatever, uh, office cleaning, regular office cleaning in this area and that would nest within that location main location page and it would be office cleaning in slightly different because it's a smaller town or a smaller office in that nested location so start thinking about you know what i mean like what one what makes use what people are searching typically people don't necessarily wake up straight away and go you know oh, oh end of tenancy they, they actually want to see a lot of things, especially with something like this. They're typically not going to pick up the phone straight away. They're not going to Google end of tenancy cleaning straight away. They Because this is not necessarily a cheap service, right? Um, they typically want to have a quick look around. But when people are searching for things like, I don't know, like something a little bit more unusual that you did, it was a... I don't know, something uh, something a little bit more unusual. Um, you know, people typically search the more specific things. Uh, Three-bedroom house retirement or moving. Three-bedroom house moving cleaning, moving clean or whatever in XYZ town. Uh, what the job was, how long it took, what the quotes were, a couple of images, you did the carpets, this, the stair, to that, to that. And be honest also say, look, we had a bit of a problem with the stairs. You know, these hadn't been cleaned in 22 years. Um, uh, and it took us a bit longer on this. And, you know, people want to read that. They want to see your professionalism. They want to see what you do. But you're building and you're feeding the machine. And that is a much nicer way than creating a load of crap, right? You are feeding it within things that are actually useful for the user. But at the same time, you are defining where you actually serve. Excellent, excellent tip. Yep. All right, let's go to number nine on our run list. Number nine. 
Robbie King uh, asks the question titled, would it be wise to wait? It usually is. So I'm still working with my developer to get my site's technical search engine optimization in order. Um, semicolon, fixing redirect issues, adding meta tag descriptions, minifying code, etc. But I've still got plenty of blogs that are ready to be published. Would it be wise to wait and technically at 100% uh, before beginning my content strategy? Or can I just start publishing now and figure out the technical issues as I go? So I did answer this. Um, and I just had a thought. I'm assuming the site's live. So it's live and it's got these technical issues. But on the other flip side is articles typically don't have a lot on that page. They don't have a massive amount of resources going on. It's literally the article, maybe a couple of images, some, you know, referral, uh, like recently published, but like they, they literally don't have a lot of resources on. And unless you're in such a bad template that like even the article, you know, they, they typically don't have any massive issues on them. Publish them, start moving through them whilst you're working on the rest. Uh, you know, because it's going to take time for them to be found in index. And at the same time, you know, uh, you can be working on the other stuff. So I'm like, go for it, start pushing them out, you know, start working through it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's about prioritization, making sure that you do what is crucial first. Um, and you probably never get at 100%, you know, technically. There, there, there will always be something that you can improve there. Perfection is never attainable, even though you strive for it. So, yeah, um, you know, if they're really bad issues, if they're really bad issues that need to be addressed, then yes, um, you know, in the things that we mentioned, redirect issues, fixing that is probably a high priority compared to, say, minifying the code. You know, the, the, the benefit of minifying the code is, I think, marginal, whereas sorting out redirect can be quite important. So it's about making sure you have the, your priorities right. But I agree, you know, push things out and amend if necessary. And I think that otherwise you won't be publishing anything um, forever. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, let's go to number 10 on our run list. Um, it's one from Robbie King and it's saying, will that actually achieve anything is the title. Robbie goes on to say, so I've been using the artificial intelligence writing tool jasper.ai recently to churn out some blog posts. It's good. No, it's not. Um, whilst it can't write the kind of long uh, authority building content that I like for my site, it can certainly write light, informative, 500 to 1,000 word blogs. I figured these light blogs could serve as complements to my main publishing calendar. Um, I published my authority building content earlier in the week and my lighter content later in the week. But then I asked myself, um, will that uh, actually achieve anything? Uh, while these lighter posts are useful and are keyword optimized, they certainly don't provide as much value as the posts I wrote myself. And they will probably not outrank what they're competing against. It's, that's the job of the long form content that I wrote. What are people's thoughts? Uh, should I publish these additional artificial intelligence posts since it could maybe help a little. They take a little time to write, so I might as well. Or is it a complete uh, waste of time? I see Jason Wells there began with uh, test and find out. Um, Tim Kappa said, uh, as Jason above says, the proof will be in the, in the indexing position and the click-through ratio. Yeah, I mean, 
I've, I want to see examples of this before I, you know what I mean? I just, I just don't feel how, like, I know, I mean, Robbie already said, yeah, it does okay with 500 to 1,000. Um, um, like when he says it's okay, you know, we're just going to take it at okay. Uh, I still, yeah, I'm uneasy about it in the sense that, like, I think it could, but, you know, why do you just want to churn out a couple of 500 to 1,000? That's, that's the thing. Um, if it's a compliment to something or you're just looking for a, something on a particular landing page and then you have a copywriter fine tune it put a bit of nuance into it uh, until i kind of see it i can't really um hmm, I, I i i don't know I, you know i don't see it being like if they wrote the jasper site because funny enough they don't give me examples here but if they wrote the Jasper site all in their own AI, that's kind of a question. Or does the AI write their content, their articles? Like, do you see what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, but I yeah, think yeah. things will get definitely better. Um, but I, d I don't know what the quality is. Yeah, we need David for this um, question. Um, but, but yeah. Yeah. Dave, Dave would be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he wouldn't be too happy about this. Um, yeah, I mean, as others said, I think it, it's probably worth experimenting. But in the end, um, if it's something that can be done easily and, and easily replicated, then other people are going to do the same. So it's going to become difficult to distinguish um, your output from others in the end. You might have a marginal advantage um, at the moment, especially um, AI output is related to the content that you already have, but otherwise my feeling is that it's you know, whatever AI produced materials are they will become buried because there will be so many similar materials produced by yeah and and on the flip side you know we know that there's this whole issue with indexing if can you imagine if i don't know a million blogs just started generating on a daily basis like with this ai like a million sites you're all using ai chucking out 10 a day and it could be big, it could be 10 million. Like, it just Google wouldn't be able to literally, they would have to find a way of sorting this, wouldn't they? And yeah. Yes, I'm not so sure if it's a really a viable long term um, strategy. It might work. And, you know, if it works, then why not? But yeah, like, Tim said, I'm not 100% sure how, you know, how much shelf life it's going to have. I think it works as long as uh, until the, the um, um, quality of the item um, is, is affected to the extent that um, Google um, has to rewrite Google, but uh, um to make sure that uh, the bad content uh, doesn't appear or as much as they can that's that's what they do that's what they've always done all right let's move on to number 11 on our run list uh, this one uh, is from chris green uh it's titled does google alerts pick up most links that are created um if not, uh, any reasons why it doesn't? Um, Michael, Michael Martinez said, uh, 
Um, it's not going to pick up links, uh, nor does it pick up all mentions. And Ash Nalawala said, uh, how do you use Google Alerts to pick up links? And my, my, my thoughts exactly. Can you enlighten us, uh, Masataki or Tim? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't, like Google Alerts, and Jesus, um, is it still going? Um, it typically, like, in terms of things, so it's it's kind of, if you think about it like news, it just uses, you, you input a couple of phrases, um, of, like I haven't used in ages, um, and it's typically based on that. It doesn't necessarily pick up links. I, I, in fact, I don't think it, I don't think you can pick up domain, you can input domain, it's literally phrases. Um, yeah, all the brand. So, I mean, yeah. I think one way to use it is that if you have alerts set for your brand, and in the, if a big news outlet, for instance, mentions the brand and links to a site, then that might be picked up um, in the alert. But that's sort of hit and miss, isn't it? Because they're not looking for links as such. And so yeah hmm. but it might be helpful in picking up sort of high impact mentions but i don't know to be honest well we'll call it an answer mazataki anyway um or yeah. pardon go ahead um, yeah but the answer is oh i have no idea but yeah <laughs> yeah me, me me neither all right let's go to number 12 on our run list it's from tanzila ashraf but it's titled what is search engine optimization strategy um should i follow to target globally uh, any advice and suggestions? My case is uh, I have 2.5 years of experience in search engine optimization, and in those years, I've only performed local SEO of websites, um, whether it's e commerce or service based. The target audience of all websites was limited to their country. I've never done search engine optimization on a website that has a global uh, audience. By the way, the industry of my new project is trade finance services and solutions. Their main services are letter of credit, standby letter of credit, bank guarantee, performance bond and advanced payment guarantee. For example, if my keyword is letter of credit services and when a USA user searches um, a letter um, of credit services um, on Google ver versus the Canada user search letter of on Google. Uh, so how will Google respond and prioritize to each user? Of course, Google will give priority to local SEO sites first, but depending on the backlink profile of a website, um, oh, so Jesus what West. could I do? You're gone. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I mentioned some of this. So, look, this is financial. I did a quick search on, I think it was credit services or letter of bank credit or whatever. I did one in the US and I did one in Canada and literally it displays majority in the US as US-based businesses. Um, and the one in Canada is, is majority uh, Canadian. Um, so the first job is, is your US is going to be on .com and you're going to have um a canada page for canada on there um each one will be uh and you have to manage this with hreflang so it serves us to us canada to canada okay uh also the next thing is is you are foraying into financial services here and financial services is your money or your life well, that's how Google sees it, um, and you'd be you'd be best be pretty sure to be registered in those country 
with their particular FSAs or whatever they are, they're fu- you know their financial re- regulators. If this, these types of services are regulated, uh, or you should at least be registered at some form. Your US should be have an office in the US, and your um, your Canada should have an office in Canada. If you're reg- legally trading and prov- providing financial services, um, you already said you don't. You're based in Dubai. That's a big, massive problem uh in your first look um because you know you need it google looks at financial and medical very carefully now um so the first instance is you obviously need two separate languages to display to the user i don't know how you and and i've already suggested obviously you have location pages on each basic one this is our us offices these are canadian offices you already said you don't uh, so i'd probably look into something uh in in that regard um and obviously you're in dubai so you're definitely not registered in those countries in any form of financial thing so i don't know how it's going to be looked at um to be perfectly honest um yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just want to know what kind of website it is i mean is it informational site or is it is it a banking site the bank that actually issues these letters i mean these terms are really for uh it's b2b isn't it it's really commercial um sector is so i'm struggling a bit in understanding what what kind of site it is because i think it really depends on on the nature of the site and what the target audience or the site is or the businesses so yeah i find it uh, I find it quite puzzling. Yeah. Um, also, I, I don't know how this um, list of um, uh, content uh, directions uh, was put together because a, 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 a letter of credit or, or a, a, a bank guarantee, um, you, d- you don't get those, you don't qualify for those unless um, the, the, the bank knows your company very, very well. Because a, 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 a bank guarantee, the, the bank is undertaking to pay the bill if you don't. Um, and that's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, most businesses will have a relationship with a bank um, that it uses. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't, you know, businesses don't usually shop around. Um, they may have um, account, you know, they may have contacts or accounts with different financial institutions, but still, they're not going to look in, they're not going to sort of shop around for each and every commercial transaction that requires um, some sort of letter of credit or guarantee. So they they would naturally turn towards the bank that they have relationship with already. Um, so it is puzzling. I just I'm, I'm struggling to sort of see the picture. Well, I, I think somebody is, you know, like hoping to 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 um, um, pick the, the people searching for letter of credit, but there are no people searching for letter of credit. There, there would be people who are searching for a bank and they establish a relationship, as you said, Mr. Taki, establish a relationship, and um, it's it's. From that point, um, the, the relationship's already established before uh, somebody asks the bank to provide a letter of credit. So, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't think that the uh, the target audience has, has, has been uh, captured. Anyway, will we roll on to the next? I see Tim's gone for a coffee. No, he hasn't. He's back. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next. Um, Heather Smith asked a question. Name is and should I care or not? Uh, Heather Smith said, "Hey, a, a backlink to my site popped up on Semrush. When I checked it, it is one hundred percent my article. It looks like it's been run through an AI, artificial intelligence program, to make it not plagiarised, but the infographic is mine. Although they left my site identification." The image and they left the backlinks to my site uh, that were internal links uh, on my original article. The site has a, a domain authority of one, um, organic search traffic of three, and organic keywords of five. Keep in mind these are just notional uh, um, numbers um, arbitrarily picked by whoever makes the tool that's. Uh, spouting it out um he said, i'm just trying to figure out what the game is and if i care or not um anyone yeah i wouldn't worry about it they gave you a link from the infographic so they've credited you for it Job done. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we see these kinds of sites quite often in the AdSense forum because people are churning out um, websites or blogs um, with articles that have been through rewriting tool and then slap a few AdSense ads on um, for a few pennies. Like others said, I would ignore because um, if you start getting worried about these ones, the chances are that there are going to be more of those popping up and they're probably not going to do any harm. They're probably not going to take away traffic from your site. So it may be your best of time to pursue these um, sites. But if you're so minded, and if, um, if they are monetized, with access for, them, for instance, then you could always report the site. Um, whilst the access account is gone, those websites probably will disappear because um, there's no financial incentive. Yeah. All right. Um, that um, is. Um, Number 13 on our run list, so here we are. Next one is number 14. Um, Hafida, Hafida um, asked the question's title, should I shift my focus to backlinks or keep writing articles? It depends on whether your interests are short or long. If, um, yeah. You blog in the pets niche, said Hapada Hapada. Um, a new domain, uh, after nine months, I have 70 articles and 50% of them are ranking in the 20s. But because the niche is so competitive, those rankings are not generating organic traffic. Um, still no domain authority. Should I shift my focus to backlinks or keep plowing away at um, writing articles. No, stay on the content, stay on finding out what the purchase, look at stuff where people are trying to, um, you know, uh, when they're doing their research and try and intersect the research, stay on it. Um, I would, you know, if you don't know what you're doing in terms of Links just steer clear, man. Uh, Google still sh 
hands up manual penalties for dodgy links um and you know trying to recover from that is going to be worse than than you know anything you know that, that that you know and it's not as easy as just disavowing you have to literally manually try and get these things removed um so steer clear of it you know um i would also just make sure that you know you say a lot of them are appearing within the 20s sort of the second page that's great uh one thing i would look at is just look at your interlinking if you're producing this content how are you interlinking this content make sure the content that you're producing is actually doing its job working for you so look at you know your interlinking between these um and really getting the best value out of it and just keep you know keep on with the the content Okay, thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, move on uh, to number 15 on our run list. Um, what could be the cause of this is the title. It's from Oliver Harrison. Oliver said, uh, hey there, I hope you're doing well over there. I recently published an article on a zero competition keyword I was testing. Actually, I just got the keyword from my head and the article ranked number one on Google for the keyword. I checked the article ranking and found it completely disappeared from the search engine results pages, not even in the top 100. I didn't make any changes to the website and I don't have a manual penalty in the Google Search Console. What could be the cause of this? uh just normal day-to-day -day fluctuations you know um uh even sites that have been around a long time all of a sudden you'll notice something when you're running that um and google has literally switched it from a particular search query to another search query which they feel is more relevant to it um and that's basically the crux of it you will find it there but you will find it in a different thing if it's completely disappeared, like literally all in title, the entire article's title, um, I would I would sort of give that a week or two to see what's happening. Um, and you know, if you go into Search Console and it says it's indexed, then you know it's it's obviously trying to find you know it's it's trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, but these things do happen. Um, I would probably say you'd probably find it ranking for something else. Um, but if it's, uh, what is the, what is the URL to check if it's been filtered? You can, you can put on the end of a query uh, in Google with a, um, Okay. Hang on. Right now, it's all about analytics. Um, there is there is a query string you can put on the end of a search query in Google um, to show what's been filtered out. Uh, if it's appearing in that, then you know they and don't really find it particularly useful. Okay, thanks, Tim. All right, when I click this button, we're going to um, be at thank you for watching time. And uh, we do thank you um, very much. Um, we especially thank um, uh, people like um, Tim Kappa and Masataki Was. Uh, people who turn up uh, every week um, and uh, David Razam normally, um, who else? Micah Fisher Kirshner, uh, Richard Hearn. Um, but uh, also, um, there are the people who answer questions on a daily basis uh, on uh, the dumb uh, SEO questions Facebook group. And 
make it such a, a valuable uh, resource. We thank you um, for your interest and we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Uh, but for now, it's good night.